All right, Jeff McMahon, video is live. Stand by for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today, I'm bringing on, once again, another new co-host for you. Uh, this gentleman actually has a pretty powerful educational background, which we're going to dig into. Uh, but I'm excited to bring him on because he, you guys have heard me talk before about the power of networking. Recently, we had on a gentleman by the name of uh, Dr. Carson of Carson Natural. And uh, he spoke very highly of this new co-host for you guys. So a little bit about this gentleman is he's been a trainer for over a decade, uh, working with well over 800 people to transform their lives, vitality, their mindset, you know, accomplish their dreams, kind of like what we're all trying to do in life. Uh, but sometimes you need somebody in your corner to help you along that way. And that's what I'm learning more about this gentleman. I mean, he's got the education to back it up though, because he's got a degree in pre-med, pre-farm, dual certified in exercise science and sports medicine. This guy's got a lot of credentials behind him. So I'm excited to really dig into more of who he is and how he's helping people in the online space. So a little more about him is, you know, he's a lifestyle wellness coach and an orthopedic rehab specialist. I can keep going, but you know what? Let's go ahead and bring him on here. Without further ado, welcome to the show, Jeff McMahon. Hey, Scott. Happy to be here, buddy. Hey, man. So powerful connection, man. We just got connected, what, a week ago, maybe? A week ago, yep. Yeah, and we're already chatting. I love it. Already. So, you're we're an action time. taker. I'm an action taker. I think we're going to get along. <laughs> yeah, because we both know life is too short to wait. Well said, sir. See, usually I have you guys like save those powerful inspirational words for the end of the show, but go ahead and jump in hot. I we like it. More, we got more in their store. Good, good. Well, I mean, so obviously I kind of hinted a little bit here for our listeners. You're playing around in the online space, kind of like me, but at, at a whole different level. So you, your brand, because I'm a big marketing guy, so okay. your brand is Total Body Construction. Correct. I love the word construction. And it has many definitions in the world today. Um, have you always been under that brand or did you start? Cause you, you know, 10 years as a trainer, you know, did you start kind of working at a gym as a personal trainer? Where, where did that whole metamorphosis happen? Yes. I started with gold's gym in Cincinnati, Ohio. Used which to be a that, customer there's, um, <laughs> you, then we got changed into, um, the franchisee owner wanted his own brand. So he started urban active. So I was the head trainer of urban active for six years overseeing 13 gyms here in Ohio. And um, then they got bought out by LA Fitness. And oh. transition, I went on my own and started Total Body Construction. Smart move because I've been to some LAs around here and we're based in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So that's an hour north of Philadelphia, about an hour and a half west of New York City. If that gives you an idea, yeah. we're on the eastern edge of, uh, of PA. So you're only one state away. Um, Correct. But I will tell you, LA, in my experience, and there might be a few people that I know here in the Valley, Lehigh Valley, where I'm from here, that might be listening to the show. But sorry, guys, not that impressed. Like, you guys have it's gone downhill with your gyms. God awful. <laughs> um, and I think part of it is they dropped their rates a couple of years ago, at least in my area. They were playing this new, like, low cost game. And I'm like, guys, when you first brought your chain to fruition and your business model to fruition, when I walked in there, I was like, man, this is pretty higher class. And I, ex I would expect to pay a little bit more than going to a Gold's gym. Um, right. So since we're chatting about this, what's your point of view on that, man? I mean, I'm all about value in our business and value in our brand. Like, what do you think about that? Do you think LA used to be higher than G uh, Gold's? Are they still there? Are they, you know, not, we're not trying to bash brands. We're just trying to help people understand, I guess, what those bigger brands are like. Yeah, well, I mean, the biggest thing was um, Planet Fitness came in and they're charging mm -hmm. 10 bucks. So people are like, hey, why am I paying so much when I could pay 10 bucks at Planet Fitness? All I'm doing is using the treadmill anyway. Why do I have to pay 50, 70, 80 bucks a month for a gym? So that's where that whole scarcity, you know, new kid in town came into play. And my reason for leaving was LA Fitness, like as a trainer, they, were, they have a bad training session rate schedule, all that kind of stuff. Like Urban Active, we had it on point. We were upgrading people all the time. People loved us. It was a good system. LA got so, rid of that. I so, went from 15 trainers in my gym down to three. So people are willing to pay for quality service is what I'm yes. hearing. Okay, interesting. Yeah. 15 down to three. Down to three. And now I think they only have two people in that gym working as a trainer um, in this the one that I was at in Cincinnati. So yeah, it, it's just a different vibe and people would rather go 
CrossFit came around around that time um, and it's become super, super popular. So yeah, I mean, that- it really started blowing up when I got into CrossFit probably back in, I don't know. Well, I, actually, I really learned it technically really learned it in 2010. But it, I think it started from 2008, 2010. It really started coming in and into fruition. The games were really starting to kick into gear, all that type of right. stuff. So like we would play around with the workout of the day sometimes um, at the gym, but our gym wasn't set up to be a CrossFit gym. So, um, but yeah, so I just think the competition around them really morphed what LA tried to do. And I think Lifetime Fitness is probably the only premier gym, at least in the Cincinnati area, for people to go. Oh, to. you guys have a Lifetime. We have lifetime, yeah. So I stumbled across lifetime when I was in Arizona when I stumbled across CrossFit. And I was in uh, Phoenix and Scottsdale area, so nicer, you know, nicer area of Arizona. And I'm like, my buddy moves into this high end condo and I'm on my days off. Um, and I don't know if you actually got a chance to really research my bio, but I, I was out there doing some federal wildland firefighting. I left the corporate world for a couple of years. Yes. And went on an adventure. So on my days off, I was like, oh, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to civilization. Uh, which, by the way, don't do that in the middle of the summer in, in Arizona. Bad no, idea. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but he had this high end, like you know, like they have. Like, Scottsdale has a lot of trendy communities, and right across the street was a Lifetime. And I walked into that place, and I was like, "What is this? They've got, you know, we were just talking about triathlons before wall. recording. Yeah, I mean, climbing walls and triathlete coaches and like fresh smoothie bars with with uh, wheat wheatgrass and all this trendy stuff. This is 2010. I'm like, we do not have this on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> And the cool thing was, here's the best part. What did they charge? Like, when, do, you, do you know what they're charging to this day? Right now, it's, I think, 99 a month. That's actually lower. Yeah, I remember my buddy was paying like 120 Okay. And at Scottsdale. Could be the market. Well, I know there's tiers. Like, if you aren't using the soccer field and the rock climbing, like, you have different packages to it. But, yeah. yeah. I knew it was somewhere around 100 bucks a month. Yeah. But, I mean, let's think about it. It's a premium level facility. Mm-hmm. And it comes down to what people see as – value in their service. So, and, and I, I'm going to help our listeners out here because a lot of times we're picking up new listeners all the time. So I think we kind of really kicked into high gear here with Jeff and just started jumping right in. But um, yeah, he and I are fitness guys. Okay. So we're geeking out a little bit on this. So, you know, roll with us on this one, but right. he's been in some gyms. I've worked in gyms. I've been a spinning instructor. I've been a part of golds. I've been in a, a smaller facility here in the Lehigh Valley where I'm from. I'm a CFL one CrossFit coach. So I've played in a lot of different domains. I've been a ski race coach for many, many years um, mm-hmm. outside of the gym world. So yeah, we've been around that. I don't have your wonderful level of education, by the way. So <laughs> uh, did you always obviously plan on getting into your, this personal training dedicated type of uh, fitness space with that level of background? No, my, in sixth grade, I took an aptitude test and it told me I could be a surgeon and growing up, my mom always had a lot of health issues. So mm-hmm. I wanted to be a doctor to be able to take care of my family. That was my main goal. Ooh, purpose. But then after sophomore year of college, when I was starting to look at the MCATs and getting into med school, uh, my advisors told me being, because I'm red, green, blue, orange, colorblind, that I couldn't be a surgeon because you got to be able to see colors. <laughs> Wait, you got to be able to see red? <laughs> um, I can only see black, white, yellow, and gray. So it kind of limits Wow. It Intriguing. Um, so in doing so, I'd, you know, that's where the, I went, was then going to say, okay, let's do pharmacy. So I got a double major in pre-med slash pre-farm. And when I lived in Ohio, I was married and it was either get into UC or, you know, do something else. So I um, was working out the gym, saw some people training people. And I was like, I think it'd be cool to get paid to work out in essence. And found it is nice, that. but it's also hard to get paid enough to survive to be paid to work out in a lot of trainer situations that you've already hinted at from some prior job right. opportunities. <laughs> right. So I just fell in love with the craft, fell in love with helping people, um, seeing the smile on people's faces when they're leaving, knowing that you had a direct impact on them, feeling better, losing weight, more confidence, all that kind of stuff. Well, and, I, and I'm a big and on this show, we talk a lot about mindset, right? Because the mind yeah. leads the body. There's the slogans of mind over matter, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a huge mindset guy because if people are going into a big lifestyle change or trying to find commitment or willing to, finally at the point where they're willing to invest into a trainer and everything else, you got to get your mindset right. Like you got to get a def- good solid definition of a why before somebody like you or myself, um, especially somebody at your level could even 
start to help them. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, you can be a little bit of a mindset coach, but in the end, it's like, hey, man, you still got to own where you want to go. And you got to, I mean, do you, do you believe in that? Do you go ahead and correct me on that if you think that's important or not? Like, where are you at with people's why? Oh, well, that's their mindset. what differentiates me from the next trainer is mm. going over the, you know, you can work out all day long, you can eat right, but if you aren't there in your mind to be consistent with it and do it for the rest of your life, not just a beach body or to get ready for a wedding, but to be healthy for the rest of your life, that's who I train. You know, my clients have been with me for 10 years or more. I mean, I got plenty of clients that have been with me for eight years or more. Um, you know, I don't train people just for little short things. I train people to be with me pretty much forever. Okay. Well, and actually, while we're actually chatting here, because we have the YouTube feed, I'm going to share your site because I'm on your main homepage and I scroll down. I love the fact that, and again, for our listeners, guys, just go to totalbodyconstruction.com. It's pretty easy. Totalbodyconstruction.com. Easy. Um, but when you scroll down and you talk about how you're differentiating yourself from the rest, right there, our approach, like you have the three spheres. So I love this piece here because the first three things that I see, you have nutritional first. Mm -hmm. then the fitness, and then on the emotional. And some people may say, hey, man, nutrition and emotional, then fitness, et cetera. But in the end, like, you can only do so much with the emotional, right? You can create right. the community, the support system, and everything else. But um, I literally had this discussion today because I don't want to create a sidetrack, but, man, I'm standing here on the sidelines watching my fiance and, and our friends complete the triathlon I was telling you about. And yep. I don't know about you, but as I look at what has happened to the triathlete world, or really a lot of sports, I've seen an increase in size of these athletes. And people say, oh, that's just a lot. That's just somebody new to being a triathlete. And I'm like, no, I see people like beating people that look more athletic. They're just really big. And that's, it just reinforces what's going on here in the USA, my point. And I just love getting this point out because you put nutritional first. And I was like, yes. guys, like you, I can condition a large man or a large woman, all right? I can condition you through putting in the reps, putting in the exercises, putting in the training and the programming. But I was like, so great, we can condition that larger entity, that larger body. But in the end, it's like the size comes back to your lifestyle, your mm -hmm. nutrition, your emotional state, your stress levels, all of that. Right. You got to fix that, man. Like, that's why I tell people, like, why would you pay for a gym membership if you're not even dialing in your nutrition? And it looks like you're a big believer in that since you oh, put that first. <laughs> that's, that's the number one thing. That's why I always say when they do an assessment, they walk me through your day of what you eat. As soon as you wake up, what do you put in your body? So on and so forth. Now, did you always have that principle? Was that something that came out of the schooling? Or is that something where it's like, you know what? As you just start putting in the reps as a professional, you're like, man, it's like, again, like I'm kind of hinted. I'm like, yeah, I can teach this guy or girl to put in the reps, put it, you know, learn how to use the equipment the right way, build out a workout program, a lifestyle shift every two to three months, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like, man, that's not going to work. Uh, it's the exercises and everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. In the beginning, you know, I was new in the game and always thought, you know, you work out to lose weight like most people do, but getting into the game and learning more about my body, getting more education behind me, the nutritional piece always, always started to make a bigger impact. Well, and I love you. I mean, it's, a lot of people throw around different numbers on this, but right under your nutritional header, you have your, you know, it's 80% nutrition, 20% physical and mental. Yeah. Um, so I, I use the 80, 20 rule a lot. If I'm working with athletes, I'm like, okay, maybe it's a little more like 90, 10. Uh, right. to, if I'm talking to somebody who's already got their nutrition dialed in because they're looking for performance, but actually then I'll go back to 80, 20. If now they're, they got the nutrition dialed in, they got the exercise dialed in, but their mental game's out. So I love the fact you have physical slash mental right there. That's freaking yeah. spot on, man. I Trying love to do the whole trifecta because you need so many people just do food or work out, but they don't do the emotional and you need all three to have a transformation. So well, let's, uh, let's roll on that quick point here, man. We're already there. So emotional. We talked about mindset. I hinted at that earlier. Right. Where did the emotional piece come from? That's something that they don't teach you. No, in Tony Robbins. Ah. I've been doing a lot of Tony Robbins lurching and how to have a breakthrough. And the different things he says is you got to have a strategy. You got to have the story that you tell yourself like, so many people are like, oh, I'm just big boned. I'm supposed to be big or, you know, God wanted me to be fat or whatever their story they tell themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you got to have the state of mind to control your day every day. So stop having the um, lowering of standards that, oh, you know, I'm a size 10 waist. I'll just wear a size 12 pants because I'm going to, 
it's easier to avoid pain in our lives than it is to face the facts. So instead mm. of realizing I need to change my diet, I'm going to stop eating bad food, I'm just going to buy bigger clothes. And then that goes into bigger clothes. And then that goes into bigger clothes. And your standards lower, lower, lower. Your children's standards start to lower because they see you as a role model and they see you going down. I mean, it's a whole spiral effect that is just crazy. It's really crazy. It's frustrating to me too, because not just because I've obviously trained people and I work with people nutritionally and coaching on the, as one of my side hustles in my circle of influence, but it's like, guys, I'm like, I don't need to be the world's leading PhD to teach this to you. Like this right. is, again, I've been dealing with for years. It's one of the reasons why I stopped ski race coaching because I don't see it being taught in all sports. They're just saying, well, we're here to train these kids how to ski. I'm like, well, we got a bigger influence than that. You know, you got these parents saying, oh, let's just take them up to the cafeteria and buy them a pizza. I'm like, all right, dude, you just, we've had these kids out on the hill since 7 a.m. You're taking them out to lunch in the cafeteria at the ski resort, which let's be real. There's really very little healthy food in the ski resort. Um, I mean, unless you're a bale uh, in Colorado. (laughs) Uh, But I was like, guys, like it's the parents, my guys, like, you're taking the easy way out. Like, oh, here's some money, go buy what you want. Like you're not taking responsibility for your children. Again, I'm not a parent and I know I could probably piss off a lot of listeners right now, but I just say how it is. And I'm like, sorry guys, I've worked with parents and athletes for years. You're you're just copping out, like own it. This is your kid, this is your influence. If you're not gonna take care of yourself, at least teach your kid how to take care of yourself. And if you can't handle that, bring in somebody like yourself or myself, like ask for help. Like. Ask us to show you how to get this kid to get to a next level of performance, the next level of influence, next level of energy, whatever the goals are. Um, I don't know if you work with a lot of kids. I'm just well, throwing it in there. I do because also, I also do a um, boot camp for cancer kids. So we work with kids that are battling cancer to just feel better, feel stronger, get more knowledge on eating because food is such an impact to cancer. Um, sugar is a huge inflammation, getting your diet more um, well, oh, pause, pause. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, I'm sorry. Sugar is inflammatory? <laughs> you mean to tell me like when I was standing at the finish line at the triathlon today and you see everybody running through their transition points, squirting the packets of goo in their mouth, like that's not maybe a good idea? <laughs> like when you do the um, Susan Komen breast cancer walk and then afterwards there's donuts and bagels. And what is with things. that, man? Dude, I... Because right. it's just so... It's just... Market. It frustrates the hell out of me. Point is it's marketing, like yeah. Gatorade. You don't need Gatorade unless you're doing a triathlon or exerting energy for more than 90 minutes. And even then, Gatorade is a lot of sugar. So it's yeah. like, really? But they see the commercial. And that's the problem with America is we see commercials as information versus advertising to sell a crappy product. So, See, what frustrates me even more is, um, do you know who the, the, the name of the company that helps, helps uh, publish very, very... Uh, popular magazines like men's health, women's health, running magazine, all those who Rodale press. They're located 15 minutes from my house. (laughs) Okay. And, uh, I am Mr. No, I have friends that work there and I love them, but I'm like, guys, like I know money, it's proof. Like you just said, marketing money talks. And I was like, how many, I used to be that guy. I mean, many, many years ago, I'm like, you would think, Oh, a very reputable press company. These are, you know, they have, have athletes in here promoting this, promoting that. And it's like, you just think, Oh, well, that's, they got to know what they're talking about. I used to be a gel user. Right. Squirt, squirt, squirt. When I'm running a marathon or a half marathon, I didn't know any better. I'm just playing the, the I call it the sugar train. You're yep. up, you're down, you're up, you're down. Why do you think they put the sugar packets or the gels at every single water rest area? Cause, Cause you, you already it. burned through it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're not telling you about all the hormonal influences that are being damaged and triggered from that as well. I mean, we can get into a whole other conversation. Right. That, I mean, so. yeah, we can go long, 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 but I mean, the biggest point is, yeah, people need to start doing the research to learn how to feed themselves and their kids versus just watching a commercial because the commercial is only there to sell one product to you. Like, mm-hmm. I can't believe it's not butter. That doesn't mean that it's good. No. Yeah. Butter is so much better for you than I can't believe it's not butter. Wait, you mean to tell me that? The thing that's been around forever that was on the dairy shelf from the very, very beginning before you created man-made margarine right. and man-made, I can't believe it's not butter. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't even know what that is either. But I mean, any of that stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm so old school. Recently, I, uh, a few months back, I bought uh, cast iron skillets. Went back to the good old cast iron skillet. Okay. I buy grass-fed Kerrygold butter from Ireland. 
Okay. And uh, actually, I put a v- pretty viral post up a few months ago because I was pissed off because I went to a Whole Foods, and there's Kerry Gold, mm-hmm. and then there's Kerry Gold's newest additions. One had canola oil blended in, <laughs> and then the other one was reduced fat Kerry Gold, and I'm like, why? What are you guys doing? Why? You guys had a perfect product. It's still there, but I was like, what is all this crap? Like, you guys set yourself at the precipice of, the, of like a qu- top quality product. And I put a pile host up, Carrie Gold, one of their marketing people, actually reached out to me, tracked down my email and emailed me through my website to respond and justify why they did that. And then I shared that on one of my podcasts too, like on the video and everything. Cause I'm like, Hey, you go, I'm not making this up right there from Carrie Gold. And long story short, they justified it as we're listening to our market. This is the demand people are, one of the excuses was, well, the reason why we had a canola oil in is because the customers want a butter that's more easily spread. I was like, then warm it up. Right. Just heat. <laughs> Walk out into the sun. Cause most people don't get into the sun anyway. Hold it in the yeah. sun for maybe a minute or two while you enjoy the rays. Walk back in and just spread that knife over the top. It's probably gonna be softer because <laughs> the sun's pretty warm. <laughs> I, I can I can rant on this stuff, man. It's yeah, no, uh, that's, that's life right there. But yeah, um, no, um, I don't know where we're going with this topic. But the moral of the story is nutrition is super important. The point of the, the point of that topic exactly what that was was the fact was when I went to your site before we even had the show today, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy talking to this guy because he put nutrition before and even though you have ten years of training background, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually share this again because and you've got a lot of quality. Uh, client testimonials on your site too. And this is something I want to get into because I want, I want to make sure we skip over it because, and I'm sharing this on the video again to our listeners, guys, if you ever get bored, go to the YouTube channel for Live the Fuel for Scott Mulvaney and you'll see these episodes in video form too. And I link it to livethefuel.com. So you'll be able to see Jeff and I, you know, rapping right now. Uh, but like, he's got four different people on here. And the funny thing is none of these people are like world-class athletes that are in his clients, right? These people are actually world-class podcasters, online people. So this is what I'm getting into is that these people, I know for a fact, John Lee Dumas now lives in Puerto Rico. You live in Ohio. Pat Flynn lives in California. You live in Ohio. So I love the fact that you've built a brand focusing on the nutritional piece first besides the exercise piece, besides the mental, because to be fair, these three domains – are easily educatable online. And that's kind of what I want to bring us full circle back to because I don't want to lose that important piece about what you've done with what you've built here because, yeah, you can physically teach people in person, and you do, but you've built this online niche. And obviously, this opens you up to help more people across a broader plane. Now, was that one of the reasons why you wanted to do that? Or was that one of the reasons why he's like, hey man, once I met with somebody like Tony Robbins or Johnny Dumas, it's like, I just didn't even go online. <laughs> I, what, what was that flip? What was that transition there? The flip was um, my mom had a massive stroke when I was a freshman in college and lost use of the left side of her body. So um, she asked me if there's any way for her stroke support group to be able to do exercises at home without having to go to physical therapy if they didn't have a ride to get there or whatever. Hmm. So we kind of played around with virtual training is what I call it now, um, doing like a group Skype call or a Google Hangouts at the time. And just me teaching them some exercise and rehabs to do for um, the people in her group. And then that transitioned to me um, starting to listen to business podcasts as I wanted to grow my business. Pat Flynn was the first one that I ever listened to. And he said he wanted to train for a triathlon. Hmm. So I reached out and um, to him via email and just said, Hey Pat, I'd love to train you for a triathlon virtually. I've done, you know, I've trained 13 people for Ironmans and all that stuff. Um, love to work with you. And he took me up on the offer and he was my very first virtual client. And he's in San Diego. I'm in Cincinnati. So we train via um, FaceTime. And we do live workouts. So I'm there watching his form. He's in his garage. I'm in my basement, um, you know, watching his form, pushing him through the work intensities, giving him programs to do on the bike and the swim, all that kind of stuff. And he's literally been with me since day one for three years now. That's awesome, man. And then from there, I've grown it to be, I have 22 virtual clients and 23 in-person clients that I personally train. And so obviously, you know, per your homepage, your 
now each of each of your clients are you working with them differently like are all of them taking advantage of the three domains that you kind of targeted there the nutrition the exercise piece the fitness piece and obviously the mental the emotional or to are you are obviously every customer is a little bit different that's what makes a good trainer a good coach is that they adapt to their customer well every customer is different but the the program is always you know, I have my new sports nutritionist work with them for six weeks going over what foods they like, how to get a lifestyle change, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, if, um, you know, I do all the workouts, the follow ups, the programs, things like that. And then the and the emotional side as well. Um, but I only do one on one coaching because every like you said, every client's different, you know, john wants to just get more fit and be in the best shape you can. Pat wants to get better at basketball. Um, Jeff Wenberg wants to get in shape because he's about to be a dad and wants to be able to play with his baby more. Like yeah, the man behind lean pages there. I like that. That um, we uh, that they have in front of them. So I I have done group training. I'm not opposed to it. It's just my people like to get that one-on-one -on -one attention. Okay. Well, and. I think the smart piece here is that if you are giving up one-on-one -on -one attention to focus on, Hey, uh, for example, I'm, I'm, um, heck you're teaching people about butter. <laughs> we just got that talking about it, right? It's like people have no idea that there's cl clear difference between real butter and margarine and, and all that crap. So, you know, whole clean food and yes, supplementation in my point of view is needed from time to time since we are, we have food that's pretty nutrient deficient. I'm sorry. Yeah. I grew up on a farm when I was a kid. So yeah, there's, there's some lacking nutrients <laughs> in the past 20, 30 years of farming. Um, but I love the fact that you built this entrepreneurially initially Correct. and then adapted to your mom. And I mean, that's pretty powerful. Like, obviously that's no joke, man. I mean, you, you got to like, wow, what do I do? I mean, do I keep doing what I'm doing or do I, do I flip? Do I morph? Do I um, adapt to where the next steps could be? So uh, it sounds like you obviously use the right influencers, people like Pat Flynn, um, mental and emotional type of uh, stimulation, people like Tony Robbins. Um, yeah. What did your mom think, man? Like, obviously, I'm sure she appreciated it. Um, mom always takes credit for the success of my business. She's like, see, I had a great <laughs> idea, didn't I? And um, so she's, uh, you know, she still battles with her stroke. She is, um, she just turned 70 last month and is now going through dementia. So oh, wow. um, she had a heart attack last year, breast cancer twice, stroke, born, um, open heart surgery after I was born. She's had the whole shebang go through her. So um, she's a fighter and she's proud of what I'm doing and how much I've been able to uh, grow through this virtual online thing. Okay. And you, are you 100% online now with that metamorphosis? No, no, no. I own my own. Uh, studio here in Cincinnati, about a 5,000 square foot gym. Right. I just wonder if you already have, if you've actually separated yourself by, Hey, I got a team there now. And now you can focus on the online one-on-one -on -one, or are you still kind of living in both physical I'm and online? I'm living in both right now and probably in the next year to transition into the, to the online only. Okay. Now would you keep the studio and then basically create a training system to train people that could do what you do or yes. are you... Okay. Yeah. If, I started an internship program with Cincinnati State. So we're getting two interns every semester coming to smart. the gym. I have four trainers there now, plus a baseball coach. And then um, I just, my people I've had for 10 years, it's hard to yeah. turn them away right now. You had the relationship. So the, that's the hardest part. I mean, I technically could. It's just, I would feel bad. So I'm just not at that mental state yet to do so. Is there, interesting on that point, I mean, is, you know how some say everybody's got a price? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the price doesn't have to be a dollar sign, but have you thought about that? Is there a, a price or a, a decision that would finally help that make the full flip switch? Or is it come down to right now where it's like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to work on uh, maybe building the internship and then slowly stepping away. I mean, is there anything that would happen right now that would allow you to say, you know what? I just got to go all in on the online. Um, right now, I'm... Um also, I just created a course to teach trainers how to do virtual train like I do, a whole system in place. And stuff. So as that grows and my influence grows where I have people um, looking to learn more about virtual, learn more about training, that kind of stuff, um, that's when I'll start to make the change. But this year was all about filling up my book, which is what I did. Now I'm looking to grow my business to the next level next year. Now, is that what I'm saying on here? Like, uh, here by rec I'm on your resources again, listeners, uh, guys, again, totalbodyconstruction.com or just go, 
go there and click on resources. But I've noticed here, like here are my recommended pieces of equipment to purchase to get started with virtual training. Is this page really for your customers saying, hey, make sure you have these types of things that I can actually work with you better? Okay, so this isn't somebody saying, hey guys, I mean, I guess a coach or a trainer could also say, oh yeah, I probably should make sure I have these to show my customers how to use them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I um, always start everyone with a stability ball and a set of dumbbells because in essence, you can do so much with those and then we grow into you know, maybe a kettlebell or a resistance band, small stuff that doesn't take up a lot of space, but has multiple functions in it. Then, I'm a big fan of kettlebells. There's, it, it freaks a lot of people out. Um, I'm actually working on putting together an event uh, next month with a local CrossFit gym, but I'm connected with through my nutrition company that I work with. Um, there's a Team USA world-class world champion athlete that I'm friends with, uh, Valerie Pawlowski out nice. of New Jersey. And she's been building her own it's just been helping influence building like world competitions for kettlebells, finally bringing it here to the U S like, I guess every other country kind of hosts it okay. and kettlebells exist here, but there's no like world competition that she competes in. So mm -hmm. when she goes to other countries, like she's one in Germany and all these other countries. Um, and I mean, they're doing the competitive, you've seen the competitive kettlebells with the, uh, the larger 35 millimeter handles. It's a whole different level. I, like all or the kettlebells are the same like size. Clean and presses or snatches the whole thing? Oh, they're doing something called cycling where you, you, you literally keep swinging the bell for like an hour. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm sorry, it. what? I was like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of reps. Like there's, there's different stuff. You swing two kettlebells if you're a guy. I mean, there's all different. There's world, yeah, there's world competitions just for kettlebells. I, and uh, I, mean, I, just, I play with them and I love them, but I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, like I, I usually, my most challenging thing is to teach somebody how to do a proper Turkish getup. Like that always right. gets everybody because there's so much stabilization involved. And so that they're powerful tools. It's just cool though, because like once I started seeing what the world-class level was, I'm like, I had no idea that technically the competitive kettlebells, they're all the same exact size, uniformity. So the only thing that makes a good world-class kettlebell is that what they do is they just carve out the guts of it, the center of it, and mm -hmm. they and that they still have to make sure it's balanced and everything else. But that's why they all look the same size, all the same size handle. So well, our traditional kettlebells you see at like Dick's Sporting Goods or at a CrossFit right. gym and everything else, like yeah. So anyway, I'm bringing her in, and I'm looking forward to that, man, because like. I've never attended it. I'm looking a, forward to listening to that show too. That's going to be awesome. Well, she's been on the show a couple times already. Uh, okay. But then we're going to actually do an event. And then, yeah, I'll probably, we'll probably sit down afterwards and then record an actual episode as well while we're after we're done at the gym because I'm going to video it and everything because I'm like, I've, I think it's cool. Like she's trying to build, like you do. I mean, but she's not doing it online. She's still, she's got to do it in person because that's a little bit different than just, hey, I'm going to go buy a kettlebell and learn to do some basics. Like she's teaching like, elite level stuff because she's talking about how to rebuild shoulder confidence and shoulder stability. Cause I've had my shoulder rebuilt twice. So I'm intrigued because I'm like, Ooh, is there something else that I'm missing in my shoulder workouts that I could get from a from world-class athlete? So I'm pretty excited by that. Um, also yeah. I've actually, have you ever heard of a uh, buddy Lee? I have, uh, he's been on Vinny's Vinny, uh, Twitter Rich's show okay. and he's been on my show. So he's the world-class like jump rope guru. Right. And he was just at the CrossFit Games as a vendor this year. So, okay. and I actually have one of his jump ropes. They sent me a rope. Anyway, I'm trying to get him. I would love to get, that's my next goal. I want to get him to come and do an event here because that'd be sick. Like, it's, you know what I'm talking about. When you find these world-class people like Tony oh, Robbins, gosh. like you name yeah. drop Tony Robbins. I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. Again, to our listeners, guys, there's, there's some generational gaps. We, our show does influence a lot of millennials. There's also some Gen Xers. I'm, an, I'm a Gen Xer. Um, there are some Gen Xers that some of you guys and ladies just have never heard of Tony Robbins. You're missing out. Close the guy is. See, I'm 35. I don't know. Am I Gen X? Am I? I think we are. Yeah, because I'm, I'm 39. So, okay. yeah, you should, be in, you should be in my world. Um, I'm a millennial. <laughs> no, no. Um, and there's, again, nothing wrong with that. But I think it's powerful because my nutrition company, we just had like Tony Robbins there this past week, like at the big, big annual event in Vegas every year, 15,000 people um, attending that and him influencing, you know, uh, some of my business partners and stuff. I'm like, wow, this is sick. Like this is ridiculous. So it's Tony wow. Robbins, man. Like how many books has he got? Videos. He's got his own podcast show now. Does. Um, I mean, sp speak to us. You know what? If, I, if our newer listeners listening right now, like why is it, that I'm geeking out about Buddy Lee and Valerie and you're geeking out about Tony Robbins. What is it about that? Why did you pick somebody like Tony and like you, you know, all the other uh, people that you're coaching right now? Like, why is it so important to have somebody at that level influencing your life? Because I realized how important the mental side is and it just intrigues me, the power 
of like, if you always hear, um, you know, drug testing, they do placebo, right? Where they tell you this drug is, um, you know, you're taking an amphetamine, you're supposed to speed up your body, but they're like, um, they give you a placebo and yet your body still speeds your body up because your mental power to do so, mm-hmm. or it gives your body um, a depressant or a narcotic or whatever, and it's supposed to slow it down, but they tell you it's an um, amphetamine, so it speeds it up anyway. Like just the mental capacity, what you can do just blows me away. Like he, I learned so much on like breathing in your lymphatic system and how you can calm stress. Like so many people are so stressed every day. They think it's cool to sleep four hours a day. They think it's cool that you're stressed out 24 seven. Like my wife is a special victims detective and she deals with wow. stuff. And so her life is stressful. And so we do these breathing techniques because it's so helpful and beneficial to your body that it all starts with your mind. Then it starts with oxygen because you got to be able to breathe Then you mm-hmm. need water and then you need food. And yeah. so I'm um, working that process through and I just love the way Tony does examples and analogies to makes it make sense to you. Yeah. A recent, I was actually just talking, I'd actually, was it, was it, was your buddy, your buddy Phil's episode again, Dr. Phil Carson for our listeners, Carson natural. Um, he's still your client, right? He still is two years yeah. running. And this guy's a very big natural doctor. Um, but we, we kind of, I, I kind of hinted about the fact that, uh, his he's he they launched a tony robbins podcast show and i was listening to it coming back from new york last week and um he his one of his recent episodes was about his three top biohacks and i'm a big biohacker as well uh but it's interesting because most of the biohacks were around proper rest and recovery Mm -hmm. and it wasn't just about like nutrition or mindset or going to events like he just he just purely dug into stuff like cryogenics and light therapy and just like all the different things that he's researching and working with experts on to try and figure out you know because the guy's like he gets on stage and talks again like i said fifteen thousand people and then he does that like week in and week out all over the world all over the travel the stress i mean that's you basically he's like a world-class athlete of speaking um besides besides the fact the guy's like a giant i mean the guy's six huge. seven yeah with like like with basketball hands i mean <laughs> <laughs> um but I, I love the fact that people uh, that level or at least being honest and trying to trickle back in like he could just talk about motivational minds and everything else but no he's still trying to teach us all like hey guys there's other stuff that even he's still trying to learn he's mm-hmm. still trying to hack and find the next level of performance the next level of recovery uh what you just hinted about that's powerful what your wife your wife correct Wife, yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm, in, I'm finally in fiance mode, so I'm <laughs> getting used to that stuff. Um, but like, it's my 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 fiance. She's a veterinary doctor. So I had no idea until we started seeing each other that veterinary doctors are like at a high rate of suicide, like next to dentists. Dentists are too. Yeah. And what the heck is up with dentists? Like, really, dude? Like, I don't get. Like, is, are you upset because you stare at teeth all day? Like, I don't it's understand like that. Gross teeth. It's not like everyone has like a pretty smile. You got chewing no. tobacco. You got smokers. You got yeah. cab. I mean, I don't know. Like, have you ever read up on that? Because I've admittedly, every time this comes up, every few months, somebody brings it up, and we joke around about it. Like, what is it so stressful? I should probably go find an article published. About I have it. a client that just retired as a dentist for thirty-five years. I should ask him why it is. I'll get back. Yeah. To- I, see I would love morning. to know because I'm like, what is it, dude? Like I have a, one of my good buddies that I road bike with because uh, we're big cyclists as well. He's a dentist. He's never talked to me about depression or anything unless he's hiding something from me. But I'm not saying that all dentists they are have depressed. They a great profession. It pays well. It pays they, well. Yeah, he's an entrepreneur like yourself, like right? myself. It's like, okay, you work for yourself. Now, he's struggling like he because he's, he's getting older. He only has his one practice. Oh, okay. uh, and uh, he's, he's got a niche in mobile dentistry. So he goes out and works with the, um, the aging population and goes to those homes, those properties and, and like does all the services right on site. So oh, uh, cool niche, interesting concept. But going back to our point here about mental stress, it's like, again, your, your wife, my fiance, I'm like, guys, like, that's why I'm a big proponent of yoga and meditation. And, and I'm still looking to improve it. I'm not perfect. I'm still mm-hmm. working on it. I'm the crazy high energy guy in case our listeners, especially the newer ones, haven't realized that on this episode, I get pumped up. All right. It is what it is. That's who I am. Everyone's supposed to have our level of energy. The problem is people don't because the food they eat, the lack of exercise, the lack of activities, we all should be this excited all the time. 
okay, I need to get that like permanently recorded and put on right. a loop. No. And then I'm going to just play that to my, my fiance. Be like, there you go, babe. See that. And she'll be like, I don't care what he says. <laughs> She's like, just go away. Like, go, go ride a bike or something and sweat it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, that's, that's a great point to make. I mean, it's a lifestyle component, right? That's what yeah. we're discussing here. And it's now, sad. granted, you and I have just spent, actually is a great term, I would love to hear your feedback on this since we're on this exact point right now. And it kind of ties it all back together, all back to your domains of nutrition and exercise and fitness and the mental game. But it's like, guys, like Jeff and I have just put in a lot of reps over the years. He's been a trainer for 10 years. And then part of that, he put in a lot of reps on education to just wrap his mind around all this stuff. But in the end, you and I are still, still voracious consumers of knowledge and education. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I personally love every once in a while, like every month or two, I'll just log into my apps and see how many audio books that I've crushed on my road, road trip travels when I'm driving and, and all the podcasts, the like podcast I look at the hours that I consume. Yeah. I don't listen to an FM radio, like driving the 40, either. driving the hour back from the triathlon today. Like that's the, I put on Pandora because my fiance is in the car. I don't listen to music anymore in the car. And some people agree and disagree with that. But I'm like, I love turning my car into a mobile university. Yeah. I'm always learning. Learn on the podcast. And there's no commercials on the podcast. It just goes right Thank into you. it. Get it done. Yeah. Well, some, some, some podcasters. Have, but I fast forward <laughs> through those parts. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I don't like the mid-reel uh, stuff. It's kind of frustrating to me. <laughs> um, but the point I'm making here, and I'd love to hear your feedback on, is this putting in the reps, man. Like, I say this, I, I've noticed this, this term has come out for me on the show more and more, especially when I talk about mindset not just exercise and fitness. This isn't just like, Hey man, I'm not talking about putting, swinging a kettlebell, you know, for an hour, like how many reps that is like probably a thousand right. who knows, but it's like, no, we're talking about everything in life. Like you and I have high energy because we've committed to putting in the reps and let's be real. I was stressed out as heck this morning because I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning to get everything dialed in to drive down to this freaking triathlon for my fiance and my friends that changed up my sleep cycle. Like I was actually stressed this morning. Um, what, I mean, well, how do you want to weigh in on that? The whole putting in the reps, what we're talking about, this high energy piece. Um, well, yeah, I mean, putting in the reps for me is what I talked about earlier. When you start to gain weight, you lower your standards. I hold myself at a high standard. I leverage my time to be able to make sure that my health comes first because when I look good and feel good, I'm happy around my kids. I'm happy to be talking to you or to be working out with my clients. Like I look forward to my days because I start off my day by taking care of myself. And then from there, it goes on and on. So many people, A, aren't sleeping right. Like little biohack, your body sleeps an hour and a half intervals. So if you want to lose weight, sleep for seven and a half or nine hours of sleep. If you're looking to maintain, you can get away with like six hours, but hour and a half intervals is what your body sleeps in. So wake up. If you want to bed at 10, get up at um, 5.30 or 6.30, one of those two time frames. Um, if you want to bed at 11, obviously just change it up. But seven and a half or nine hours of sleep is ideal for you to get up. Oh, interesting. Was that a neurological study that you learned? Or? Fresh. Well, it's the circadian rhythm. It's just a yeah. physiological um, aspect. You, I'm, I geek out on circadian rhythm. I don't remember that part of it. Your but REM so, cycle yeah. is big REM. your lightest point of sleep is at the end of that. And if you set your alarm to then, you will wake up feeling refreshed versus draggy, hitting the snooze, going back to sleep, all that kind of stuff. Interesting. You want to shoot for seven and a half or nine hours if you're looking to lose weight because your body burns the most fat while you sleep because you're converting oxygen to CO2. That I do educate people. I'm like, guys, like, that's why sleep is so, so sleep important. Sleep is important. Yeah. But if you... Like me, I average about six hours of sleep, but I always get six. I'm not like going short. Yeah. Or I'll well, you've, you've built a program. Yes. You, you've programmed your body. Like I tell people all the time, like, it's like when people go to the massive uh, metamorphosis, I mean, like, whether it be stress, weight loss, whatever, like your body's actually still now has to go through reprogramming along with that. It's going to take mm -hmm. a couple of, I tell you all the time, like if people want to start seeing like a legitimate body transformation, I personally, the one I put my people through, I'm like, guys, it's 16 weeks, man. Like not this 30 day crap. Yeah. You're going to see, if you're committed, you're going to see some stuff in 30 days, but there's nothing sustainable about that. Right. Stop. Everybody's like, so many of us are looking for the fast short term thing. And what you're because talking about here is the yeah. fast short term thing. Lose 10 pounds <laughs> in a week, get a six pack in six weeks. Oh, I'm so full circle right back to the magazine stuff. I love it. And the but television you know it's stuff. True. Yeah. Um, but no, I hold myself at a higher standard to teach my kids 
no, they don't eat the best, but when I'm making dinner, there's always going to be vegetables. There's always going to be healthy food and um, they know what's right and wrong. We're a little bit lenient as parents, but you know, my kids are very healthy and all that stuff. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I just hold myself at a higher standard to allow myself to be fit because I want to be, because I want to be around. I've seen what my mom's gone through. I don't want to have that. I don't want to, I see what my clients go through and I want to be an example for them to look up to, to come to me, to ask questions and all that stuff. Well, it's, it's, it, it truly does become, again, we talk about health, business, lifestyle on the show. It becomes your lifestyle. And I think that's what we're, everything you and I've been talking about today is about, I think getting people into that, hey man, I gotta be working with people or surrounding myself with influence or putting in those reps over the long haul. And we want that short term, you know, quick fix because the marketing says you, and it's like, guys, that's why you will be stuck on the never ending roller coaster ride because that's what they want from marketing. That's what Weight Watchers wants from their marketing. Like, yeah, you'll have the success and then you try and go off the program, but because you didn't learn anything, yeah, gain all the way back. And <laughs> now you're basically hooked on the, uh, the Weight Watchers teat financially. And you think, oh, I'm just going to stay on that the rest of my life. I'm like, what did you actually learn? Like, that's not real. That's not real lifestyle. I'm, I'm a very big anti Weight Watchers guy. Um. <laughs> oh, because I am too. Um, yeah. The point system and all that, because they'll just yeah. do fake sugars and all that stuff. Aspartame, like no. Yeah, uh, guess what? Your body doesn't know hormonally sugar, sugar. Sweet yeah. crap is sweet crap. Like hormonally, your body sees a sugar spike and it's like, it doesn't matter if it's fake, real, leaf-based. thing is. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why I got to get you hooked up with Vinny Tortorich, man. Like he's, he's, he trademarked the term, uh, no sugar, no grains, NSNG. So that's a, he's a huge movement behind that. I think the Facebook group now has got like almost 20,000 people in there. Just everybody trying wow. to implement no sugars, no grains in their lifestyle. And uh, even his regular co-host, Anna Vocino, shout out to the creator of the Eat Happy Cookbook. Anna Vocino is his regular co-host and she created a grain-free, almost like 95% sugar-free cookbook. So clean eating. I absolutely love it. I bought mm. one for everyone in my family. I okay. definitely, you should definitely check her out. She's on definitely Amazon. Check it out. Um, but I got to get you guys connected because there's a different term there, NSNG, but you, it doesn't matter. Like, you know what we're talking about. And because right. he's been in the medical level of education that you've been in, yeah. you guys will geek out because he's constantly teaching people about leptin and ghrelin hormonal levels, right? What, you know, what, what one's telling your body you're satiated versus not the sugar spikes, the roller coaster ride. Like he is all about fat adapted. He's all about, he, he literally is a cancer survivor tying us back, right? To okay. your little, your little yeah. purposeful business piece of helping children with cancer. He is a cancer survivor. And every time he goes back for the test, they're like, well, you're, you're still cancer free. But because his doctor, his friend said, listen, years ago, I was like, you got to get off the sugar and you got to get off it now. And he was a pro cyclist, like competitive. He's been like multi, like he does, uh, he's married to a, a James Bond movie model. I forget her name. Um, he's been around a while. Uh, that's good score. Uh, you know, he's a trainer <laughs> of the stars, but his point was, he's like, he's like, he lucked out with her. Uh, he said, he said, she, she's also like gotten into ultra marathon and they run through the desert, all that type of stuff. And he's like, listen, he's like, he's like many, many, many years ago. I didn't know the difference. I didn't know. He said, but then all of a sudden I go back to my education that I learned in school and they're like, well, wait a minute. Like your body gets fueled off of fat. Fat is a more efficient fuel source. Fuel. Um, and like, uh, cause fuel is my buzzword, right? You know, we're here to fuel your health business, your lifestyle. I'm like body fuel, health fuel, mind fuel. It's like, this is what we're talking about. Everything you and I are chatting about today is giving our listeners hopefully some more fuel in the tank that's going to burn for the long haul. Not this court first, like flash in the pan sugar burn. We're yeah. looking for that good, rich, fatty, long burn. <laughs> so yeah, I got to get you guys connected because I know you guys will have a powerful episode. That would be a good episode. Uh, yeah, for and, sure. Uh, and he's just a good guy. And he just says it how he is. He's some, he, it's profanity sometimes, but he's just he's I'm like from me. New York, so I... I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I, sometimes it flies on this show too. I don't edit anything. I'm like, guys, if someone's really passionate and we let it fly, it flies. I, okay. Sorry, it's a real world. <laughs> <laughs> that's and true. When you're fired up high energy guys like that, going back yeah. to our prior point here of like, we can't help it, man. Like, this is what, it's what listeners, guys, like, if you're hearing what Jeff's talking about, it's like, this is what we're talking about. It's not just me. I'm not the only crazy high energy person who founded this show. Like, 
I, I love bringing on people like this guy because it's like, oh yeah, Scott's the, not the only crazy high energy guy. Like nobody no. in my family looks like me. Everybody's big. Likewise. I, no one I love my family. family, but they're like, guys, like they don't listen to me at all. They do their way. And I, I gave up. I'm like, guys, you know what? Your closest friends and your family are the hardest people to help. Would you agree? I, except for my mom, after she had her stroke, she was then starting wanting, wanting my help for the rehab, but okay. no, none of my family is in shape. None but of what sucks help. is it took that for you and her to build that bond. I mean, yeah. in the end, thank God it happened because you guys have connected at that level. It's a shame you guys have connect, could have connected at that level before that. Yeah. Um, I mean, but she I, had the stroke when I was a freshman in college. So I didn't have my education when she yeah. had her stroke, which is so, I've, um, but you know, going back to the reps in our life and having energy, I wake up every day happy and I literally have a stress free life. Things happen and you either control what you can control and you don't freak out about what you can't. You just, people get stressed mainly on two parts. A, they get overwhelmed with that things at work and they don't think they can get them done or B it's an emotional stress, like family member having cancer or stroke. Again, you can, you control it. You're predicting a future that isn't there and it messes with your emotions because you get anxiety or it kind of like a, a battered wife that thinks her husband, Oh, well, he's not going to beat me next week. So I'm going to stay with him now. And they predict the future, but that future is never there. So they stay with him for 10 years getting beaten to the point of, Wow, man, you just one way or the other. You probably can't even see it, but I just got like goosebumps. Oh yeah, there you go, coming through. Oh. My, I just got like when people hit on powerful little points like that, I just react. Yeah. It's crazy. I got the hair stand on my head. Didn't even realize this happened all of a sudden until I felt it. But I love it when you you hit on these powerful points. Like that was like, what sucks is like what you just told us is common, right? Like you don't need to have your educational background to to have us all agree with what you're talking about. Like we've seen it. Yeah. Um, I've seen it with people with drug abuse. I've seen it with people with, uh, de with depression. Uh, my own sister, you know, suffers from depression. Okay. I've been on drugs for years. You know, my guys like the drugs, a band aid. It's not actually there to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. They're just treating the symptom. I was like, well, why don't you, let's, let's, let's bring it back to the foundational blocks that built the body. You know, let's start, let's start tapping into the nutrition, the rest, the sleep. It's going to take some time, but nobody wants to have the patience to fix that. And that's why I love Dr. Carson because like Western medicine and like when I was going to be pre-med and all that kind of stuff, um, mm -hmm. Western medicine is all about if you have a pebble in your shoe, they're going to tell you to take Advil versus taking the pebble out. Like, oh, your foot hurts. Well, let's just take Advil. Yeah. And so, why don't we remove the stone and then your foot won't hurt anymore? <laughs> that's the best analogy for Western medicine. Well, uh, yesterday I ran a um, – our my CrossFit gym that I coach at, uh, we – we ran our first ever family friendly CrossFit, like not really a competition, but it's all about parents working out with their kids. So okay. they were teammates, so like father and son or like, you know, mother and daughter type of stuff. It was so mm -hmm. cool. We, it's the first one I've seen anywhere. Cause we joke, we talked about it. We're like, you know what? Everybody thinks CrossFit's about the games and what's on ESPN. Let's make something to prove like, Hey, that we are working with parents and kids and everything else. But my one buddy who showed up from my, the, the gym that my girlfriend works out at because she's a CrossFitter at a different gym. So they, different people coming in, you know, they're all from different communities, different CrossFit gyms are there to come work out with their kids. Okay. And the guy walks in and he's got a burn down his left arm, his left leg. And I'm like, what happened to you? And he's like, yeah, he's like gasoline and a fire. And I'm like, I don't even want to hear it. I was like, I used to be a firefighter. I'm going to smack you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, fire. yeah yeah it's like not a good idea um but anyway the point was is he's i was like well, so what happened to the doctors and he's like you know it's funny man he's like i just wanted to find out he's like it was fine and then it got really really bad and i was like that's your nervous system kicking in and then you know it, it started calming again and he was using certain ointments and stuff but he's like the first thing they did when i came in there was they tried to give him like medical like the really 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 bad what do you, i don't know what the, what are the pain relievers called nowadays the, the bad ones that are like uh, prescription. Vicodin, Thank you. But it was Vicodin. They tried giving him Vicodin. And it's a second degree burn, but he walked in under his own. Like, yeah, he's in pain, but he's like, I didn't ask you for a pain reliever. I was asking <laughs> you what I can do to for help, burn. you know, heal this quickly and effectively. He's like, I don't want to be on drugs. <laughs> but the first answer they went to is boom, pharmaceutical. You're in pain. Here's yeah. some drugs. Oh yeah, here you go. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, I don't need to be selling these on the corner of the street because that's what people do nowadays. Oh, he's like, God, <laughs> yeah, they do. But this is what we're dealing with, man. Like, uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm I'm dealing the vibe here, man. Like, I, I actually feel like there's so much we can talk about, but I know we both have like we're busy schedules. We need to like we get you back on. 
yeah, we, yeah, we need to hang out more. I'm loving the fact that we're connecting well. Phil, Phil was pretty excited. He's like, I got a guy for you. He's like, you mind me recommending connect? I'm like, sure. I was like, he, he had a great episode with me too. I want him to come back on eventually too, because his level of natural, I don't call it natural path, but natural, natural path of, of medicine, him being a classically trained and educated, uh, you know, prescription driven pharmacy guy. Like he was, yep. he was your pharmacist that has realized, wait a minute, I can still do that, but let's help find you maybe a natural way to fix it first. If you still want that, I can do that. But hey, let's, uh, why don't you actually find some root causes here? I'm loving what he's doing. That's why I love Phil because he helps my clients get off their medicines because he's like, okay, you're on um, whatever for cholesterol. Well, the number one side effect is rapid weight gain and water retention. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so my cholesterol is lowering, but everything else is getting worse. Fantastic. And, you know, all those kind of things that um, he's just so good at just comes off to him like natural. So I love Phil. Yeah, he's a good guy, actually. One second. Just had a box arrive from him uh, yesterday. Okay. Saliva test. Oh, I got that too. I'm, I haven't I'm done. I've never done a saliva test. I'm like, you need to send me your saliva kit because I've I've been wanting to get like into that next level of biohacking. Like, this is where I'm geeking out now. Like I'm way beyond Dave Asprey. I mean, I'm well, I'm not at way beyond Dave Asprey way if you follow level, him, but. but I'm now at the point where I'm like, I want to start getting some tests done. I want to start seeing some data, right? And like see where I'm actually at. And because I've already really gone crazy healthy. Like literally all this week, I was up for a bachelor party in Vermont doing downhill mountain bike racing. And my buddies are like, just have a beer. And I said, dude, no, if I have a beer right now, I will feel like butt. I was mm -hmm. like, I've, I'm that grain free. And he's like, why? I'm like, because like you hinted at earlier, we've chosen to take a higher path. I'm not saying it's for everybody. But here's the thing, when you clean something out of your life for a few months and then you put it back in, if your body reacts fine and your mind reacts fine, then okay, it's probably okay. Right. But if you put it back in and your body's like, oh my God, like you wake up the next day and you just feel like total butt or mm -hmm. your, your, your gut, you got gut rock going on, like your gut health. I was like, I was like, man, I, I drank beer for years living in Colorado and Arizona and mountain bike racing and everything else. It was just a part of my lifestyle. Absolutely. But I was like, well, what if Vinny's got something here, right? The whole no sugar, no grain thing. I was already pretty well fat adapted, drinking my fatty coffees and everything else. And I'm, I'm old school farm boy. I eat eggs and bacon every day and, and cook with butter. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm consuming healthy fats and healthy cholesterol. So I was like, well, you know what? Let's just see where I'm at. So I'm excited to see what this saliva test thingy uh, will do. <laughs> yeah, my wife and I are doing a sailor acidosis cleanse with Phil right now for nice. 90 days to clean up um, – are at a cellular level, our bodies to, because yeah. I'm 6'2", 185 pounds, probably nine or 10% body fat. Yep. And I've been this way for about nine years now. Um, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, so I still do my martial arts, which is why Very I work cool. out to be able to just still be fluid with my body. Like I'm training for the American Ninja Warrior, hopefully be on the show next year. Dude, my, my fiance, we watch that show all the time. One of my local buddies, uh, used to be one of my employees years ago, did the local ninja down in Philly. Uh, he didn't make it very far, but he, he was doing, he's still training for it. He, they call him Ninja Tim. Uh, okay. And actually my fiance is like, Scott, she's like, you, you were rock climbing in Colorado. He's, she's yeah. like, you're on my hair, like right at 6'4". I'm like, I, I'm right now 190 because I just got doing a big Spartan super race a few weeks back. So I'm still okay. kind of in lean mode. So I'm like you, dude. I'm tall. I'm lean. Tall, lean. You know, I've got Again, I'm six three six four, so I'm with you on that. Like, yeah. She's like, you should probably start trying some ninja training. She's like, I think you would do really good at it. I'm like, hmm, I'll think about it. And I used to study martial arts as a kid. I'm not at your level. Dude, but we're like twins. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, but my kids and wife are watching it. They're like, you should do it sometime. It'd be good for the gym and love to see you on TV. Yeah, there's so. a marketing benefit, right? We're, we're entrepreneurs. There's some... Let's, that's a bonus. I mean, know? my gym, Total Body Instruction in Cincinnati, we, our hashtag is charity through fitness. So everyone that checks like that. our gym on social media, we buy a meal for hungry kids. Then that's every, awesome. Then we're doing the cancer boot camp for kids. Um, later, we're going to start one with a breast cancer charity as well, just because my mom had breast cancer. But, um, you know, I want to be giving back to the community. So I want kind of to be on TV to let more people know yes. that gyms like mine exist and we should get more gyms like this out there. I'm going to get you, uh, may, I mean, maybe it's too, too late. Well, it's, just so you know, like I, uh, last year I went to an event called Thrive Make Money Matter. Yeah. And like Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, you, you familiar with it? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So last year it was in San Diego. The first year it was in Vegas. This year it's back in Vegas again. Yeah. And uh, I'm scheduled to go back there again. And it's a powerful event because entrepreneurs like us, yeah, there's some real estate sector people and health and wellness sector, people from all different domains. But the, the whole point was they come together to learn how to make money matter. And almost every single powerful speaker last year, even people like Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup the Soul was there speaking, man. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk spoke the previous year. Uh, there's uh, lots of powerful people he gets there. And the cool thing was the whole point behind it is like, listen, they tell you, if you can align your business with purpose, what you're doing in life with purpose, uh, or just start building it. It doesn't have to be anything like life-changing overnight. Just always like maybe say, hey, you know what? 1% of every dollar goes somewhere. Whatever you want to create. Right. They said, you will find that you will start attracting success. You don't have to make it happen. It'll just happen. So I think what you're doing is spot on. Like I tell people all the time, like everything that I do, like my nutrition company that I work with, like they're a huge partner of Make-A-Wish Foundation. So every time I have my supplements coming in every month, there's an auto donation set up in my account that just boom, there's, I don't even know how much, it's a small amount, but it's been going on for years. So I have no idea how much I've ever donated to Make-A-Wish Foundation. And every time I go to a company event, we always do like this, like we'll just stop everything in the middle of the event. There's like thousands of people. And all of a sudden people come running in, we're passing baskets around like, okay, how much money can we raise right here, right now for Make-A-Wish? And it's always like 10 grand, 15 grand, like just people throwing cash in. It's so cool. You can have fun doing this. Like that's the cool part. It's inspirational. So I love that you've actually built purpose into your business. That's powerful, man. Yeah, no, I, and I appreciate that. And it honestly, it was just, I don't know. It's just something I wanted to do. Like even my t-shirts that I do local. So like local charities, local t-shirt guy, his son has cerebral palsy. So part of the proceeds of my t-shirt went to the cerebral palsy fund in Cincinnati. Yep. Help stuff like that. I don't do the big name brains like um, United Way or yeah. definitely not Susan Komen because they're useless. Even Wounded Warrior have heard bad things about my wife's dad. Was yeah, there's been mixed family. feedback about them too, yeah. I mean, I went through the same thing when, uh, have, you, have you heard about the Hot Shots 19? The 19 no. Hot Shot while in firefighters that were killed in Arizona in 2013? No. Uh, no. Okay, so Sorry. it's, they, well, so anyway, I knew 17 of them. Like, I was also in Arizona while in, on a Hot Shot crew, but they were like the rare state-run crew. We were okay. federal. Uh, usually historically since 1910 all wildland firefighters were federal and that was an experimental program and unfortunately didn't go well um and they got burned over so 19 of the 20 guys had died and so we immediately like wildland firefighter foundation raising money boom boom boom. crossfit is huge in the firefighting community so we petitioned crossfit to create because they have what's called hero wads there's hero workouts that are create workout of the day created after fallen military fire police like first responders in general it's like my my gym like every sunday we will do a new hero wad like there's plenty unfortunately the sad part is there's plenty of hero wad programs out there to pick from so we're constantly cycling through new ones Mm -hmm. but we got CrossFit that year to recognize the fault. Like that was the biggest firefighter loss since nine 11, you know, 19 Gosh. guys all one time. And we petitioned them. I started my own little local hot shots, 19 kind of workout, a uh, charity event here again, supporting local. We raised thousands of, and with the power of the reach of CrossFit. We, exceeded our goals exponentially. They had enough money raised to pay for every one of the kids of these firefighters for college. So they've done a good job. And obviously, like you just said, there's been interesting feedback. People are saying, oh, well, was all the money done? Yada, yada, yada. Listen, the families were well taken care of. So nowadays, it's funny because I made them more of an like, You know what? I still, I was a former hotshot. That is my thing. I want to do that here on the East Coast because mm-hmm. hotshots don't exist out here. So I'm still kind of doing it small time. I, I rotated from local CrossFit gym, but now as of last year, I've switched it to the money I raise, I give to a local fire department oh, yeah. because they've already been, they've already helped, right? There's plenty of going on out there. It's a Western thing. So I was like, why not take that platform and help a local organization? So now I'm going to rotate the proceeds every year to a different local fire department because here in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of volunteer fire departments. It's all volunteer. Okay. Okay. So I'm with you, man. Like, dude, we're, yeah. we're vibing. Our on local this. is definitely <laughs> where it's at. And, um, you know, my mom's an immigrant from Italy. So like we grew up always about who, you know, and being in the community and stuff like that. So, um, this is me giving back to the community. And that's all it takes. I think a lot of us try and take, just like we, from the, going back to the beginning of the show, we sometimes take on too much. We take on, we try to tackle too much with our fitness or too much with a weight loss goal or too many pounds or, or maybe, uh, maybe I'm trying to go full blown meditation master. And it's like, uh, that's going to take some time. Right. Just like putting purpose in your life. Like, 
you don't have to do anything overnight. I mean, over the years, I've done countless years of cancer to fundraising. I've been a road cyclist for years. I've done road cycling events, hundreds of miles for MS 150, those big road biking events. Every city's got one of those. You know, yep. I've done, I, I've been there and done it. So we, we just keep, and over the years, I'm kind of like you, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, you know, I do one local thing. Mm-hmm. Like uh, this year, I'm now doing, I have an event coming up in a few months. I'm, I'm starting to raise money right now. It's a local chapter of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Okay. A buddy of mine did it last year and he nominated me this year. So I'm like, you know, so I made a new goal. Every year I've got my make a wish, my big organization. Yeah. And then now I pick an, and I still got my hotshot thing. <laughs> so now this year I'm doing Cystic Fibrosis and I rotate. I'm gonna, that's my new master plan with my business model. I'm like, you know, I'm going to do a new local charity every year. Maybe I'll repeat. We'll see. But I'm just trying to. Pick it, I think it's more power there at the local level. So I love Absolutely. the fact that you're going to try and use something like Ninja to get more purpose and more exposure. I love yeah. that. So. And in the training for it, you know, I don't have, I have Olympic rings. I have bars that do pull-ups and stuff. And I do just do a lot of barbell. Yeah. Working on that grip, um, have little grip attachments to make my grip stronger. Used to be a certified rock climber up in New York. Did in the Adirondack Mountains. The gunks? The, uh, Did what? you ever go to the gunks? No. Oh, the gunks, man. They're like world-class in New York. No, never been to the gunks. But, but you're in the Adirondacks, so you're in So I did north. like Mount Marcy. Yeah, um, I, I hiked that last year. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, small world. Small world. Yeah, I was a Eagle Scout, so we hiked, you know, did a whole bunch of backpacking all throughout those things. But yeah, um, yeah no. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going to try it. If I get on TV, awesome. If not... I get in yep. better shape. I mean, it's a win-win either way you look at it. I've been building my own little home mini CrossFit gym in our big garage. We've, we, I've gutted in the back here. Um, it's been my little side project. I call it this old garage project, like that TV show, this old house. Right. And, uh, I've already got a pull a bar in there. We got a uh, big rubber horse stall mats down for the bumper plates. Yeah. So we've got barbells back there. Um, actually my next step was I was going to get another pull up bar cause I set it up for my fiance and it's not really good for me. I thought about my well, former rock climber. I've been, researching the um the finger hold training panels okay so i'm actually going to probably get one because you can get one of those mounted right over a doorway but i'm gonna get one of those and mount it on one of the um the ceiling rafters in the garage and then i can still do pull-ups off of them but i could do like like finger pull-ups and uh that way it forces me outside of my comfort zone so yeah something something to think about for you uh definitely would think about looking into that and um yeah i'm hoping my martial arts with my flexibility will give me more range too oh yeah yeah, that's one thing I never forgot. That's one thing. I mean, I stopped martial arts when I was like 18. And okay. people to this day say, man, you're really flexible. I'm like, well, I never forgot it. I mean, it was kind of important. Well, I still stretch out now. Yeah, prevent. <laughs> it's like, you want to prevent injury? Hello? <laughs> I'm a, I, get, I finished doing a workout and people are, I finished coaching a class and people are, are like grabbing their bags and leaving. I'm like, mobilize. Like, yeah. everything is warm. It's, it's like, it's pliable. Like this is the time to mobilize. Like get stretch in things out. Get yeah. in there to stretch it out. Oh, it drives me nuts. So, yeah. well, listen, you're a busy man. I'm a busy man. We're going to have to like postpone and like call, follow up on another episode because this has been awesome with you, man. I'm glad we got a chance to connect. I owe one to Phil. Phil's the man. <laughs> I get it. Billy got I mean, this one, I, right. he and I had a vibe anyway, but I was like, I'm always looking for I don't always bring on regular repeat co-hosts, but I, I want to extend that invite to you because okay, just be everything you're doing, man, it's kind of freaky that we do have a lot of vibing there. <laughs> I'd be and, honored to be on again. Uh, it'd be, I want to just make sure that invite stands open to you because the fact that you're doing so much with purpose and your impact with cancer and what you've done, the, the influence of your mother's experience with you, like this is, you're doing a lot of good things out there. It sounds like you got a lot going on. I love it. So, and obviously you got the right people in your network cause you got, your clients are powerful people like John Lee Dumas. And I'm like, wow. All right. He's, he's got some good customers. So I work with some good, very fortunate with my clientele right now and always working, you know, trying to find new people. The hardest part about what I do with virtual training is no one knows that it exists. Like, you know, people think you have to buy a gym membership to work out when reality, we all would love to work out at home, Mm -hmm. but at home there's no accountability or convenience there. Right. that's and there's people I, trying to use YouTube University for it. Yeah. And, and you're trying to find reputable form, people. And they get hurt. And yeah. Whereas what I do, I sell accountability and convenience. You can work out at home. I can see you watch your form. Make sure you don't get hurt. Push your intensity. And you don't need a lot of equipment because you have someone there teaching you new stuff all the time. You don't get mm-hmm. bored doing insanity for three months in a row or P90X or whatever the heck the new DVD system is. Yeah, I can't keep up with them, all of them. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, uh, you know what? 
I got to look up some, when you email me the, uh, the reminder to get you uh, networked with Vinny, yeah. uh, shoot me that after this show. And then um, there's actually a buddy of mine. I helped them with a Kickstarter program to launch. It's called the Perfect Burpee. It was a basically an oversized yoga mat meant for mm-hmm. people to do fitness stuff in their home gym. So it's like it's shape, it's, it's like a, take a traditional rectangular um, yoga mat, and they made it wider out to an angle to allow the shoulder width and your hand placement. Because gotcha. like a lot of yoga mats, you're going too wide. Wider. Right. Yeah, it's a very interesting concept. I think they still sell it online. But anyway, uh, that founder of that business, the co-founder, he ended up starting to work with an app for trying to create a platform for virtual personal trainers. So um, he had reached out to me to find out if I ever wanted to demo it. But anyway, I don't know if he's still doing it. I'll have to look into that for you because I don't know if you've ever looked into research software and hmm. platforms to grow what it is you do. I mean, it sounds like you're already building your own. But there, there might be some business opportunity there for you. Yeah, especially if he has trainers that want to. That's why I'm teamed up with Cincinnati State because their people going through the personal training program are all going to know about my course. And yeah. you know, as the interns, they'll get to see virtual training in hand. I and mean, I got people in Philippines, Puerto Rico, England, Canada, you know, all over the United States. And I'm busy all the time, you know, making the money that I wanted to be making. And if I lose a client, I have 7 billion people to choose from, not just who's in my immediate city. The power of the online. How many gyms are in my city? How many saturation of people are all over the place? Well, and to be fair, I mean, I don't know what the percentages are, but the listeners of this show, I guarantee you there's going to be a chunk, whatever that percentage number is. It's like, oh, I'm open to virtual training mm-hmm. because not, again, I know for a fact that I've always been a gym guy. I love going to do something. Uh, I love mountain biking at a park or going on a road bike ride. I love going to the CrossFit gym, but then like I'm building my own CrossFit gym space. I know I'm still going to go to a CrossFit gym, but when I have a busy schedule and I'm working out of my home studio or whatever, and I want to just go get a workout, now I have access to that stuff right in my backyard. Right. But that's still going to be a shift for me because I've always been like a destination guy. For yeah. your people, you know, I got my kick bag. Yeah, there you go. BOSU ball, bench, and a rack of dumbbells with yep. medicine ball and basically everything that I would need. And I got a treadmill over there. Nice. But, um, everything that I would need to. You're maximizing your space. Uh-huh. To get what I need to be done. Yeah. But the kickback is my favorite part. My wife's like, you're so loud. I'm like, shh, don't worry about it. Well, to be fair, if you're black belt in Taekwondo, see, I was a kicker. I was never Taekwondo. I studied show and Rue, Okinawan yeah. based. Yeah. And, uh, but when I used to go to Kumite and uh, tournaments, like mm-hmm. I enjoyed fighting Taekwondo because you guys kick a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and well, with my long, my long legs as a kid, that was my advantage because I had the reach. So Exactly. Um, and the only thing that helped me was I, at least back then that Taekwondo that I was fighting against, they weren't as upper body as I was. I had much more upper body balance with that uh, lower body, whereas I had a lot more upper body strikes. So if they blocked that kick, I was still right in there. It was just, I did, I did well, but, um, We're good. you know, but it's cool. You've actually committed to that as a lifestyle. I, mean, I never, never had to use it. Thank God. Uh, Nearby. Never yeah. want to use it. I don't want to be in a fight. I like the way my face looks. No, um, I mean, I, uh, I was a bouncer for a side job when I was in college and never used it. All the guys are trying to like beat people up and throw them out. And I'm like, I would just immobilize somebody and <laughs> walk them right on. out. Never had to strike anybody. Right. <laughs> There's peaceful ways to end yes. things. So, um, Well, listen, again, this has been a powerful episode. I want to make sure we get you back to your day. Um, yeah. I still got a lot of stuff to do here and I'm going to get these networking connections established, man. We got a lot of juices yeah, flowing here. There. And, uh, but to our listeners, again, am I right that pretty much your heart, your, your soul, your, your brand, as we've said multiple times on the show is totalbodyconstruction.com. That's where they're going to Correct. find everything. Find um, me on there. I know that on Facebook and we'll have all this linked in the show notes, just like John Lee Dumas. I have very <laughs> robust show notes. I will hyperlink everything. Uh, but I know on Facebook, it's total body construction, but if you look, if people search for the at symbol, it's actually at total body club to get to your Facebook page. Yes. And then, um, are you just your name on Instagram? Cause I noticed that you have the a Jeff personal McMahon page on Instagram. TBC. Yeah. yeah. So total body construction. There's a little hint. So a Jeff McMahon. Hint. There you go. So, so cool. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll link all that in there. Yeah. And, um, but again, like I hinted at earlier in the show, I love to end the show with our co hosts It's not about me. It's about you and our listeners. Like, just leaving around some positive, powerful words. Everything you're doing online, everything you're doing in life, you've already hinted a lot of purpose. Like, you know, what is it that if they forget everything else that you talked about with us today that say, hey, you know what? That Jeff guy seems to be pretty cool. Those final words he left us with, like, I get it. Like, this is what this guy's all about. Well, how would you like to close the show out? 
what I'm all about is live life in the majority. So there's oh. seven days in a week, right? Okay. If you're healthy at least four or five of those days, the majority of the week, that little bits that you go out with your friends, it's not the end of the world. That little bit that you're in, you know, not, you don't have to work out seven days a week. I like to, I like, that's just my personal preference, but you don't have to do that. And when you live life in the majority, you're happy. You wake up, you look yourself in the mirror, you feel good. Like just focus on the majority of the time, drinking a lot of water, you know, not drinking alcohol, eating healthy, not eating fast food. The majority of the time you will get results. So live life in the majority is a slogan I like to tell people. Very nice. Live life in the majority. Well, uh, hang tight, Jeff. I'll give you a proper goodbye once we go off the air here. But yep. to the listeners, guys, that's Jeff McMahon. Again, guys, that's Total Body Construction. Check him out. If you have an excuse of being you're too busy, you're on the go, you don't have time, you don't want to pay for you know, a physical gym anymore. Maybe that person sweated on you the wrong way at the treadmill. You know, maybe you want to just go check out TotalBodyConstruction.com, man. Maybe Jeff's got something you're looking for. Uh, but that's the power of virtual. We have all this internet nowadays and cameras and, yep. and technology. Like every laptop sold comes with a camera. Hello, you guys Literally. pretty much have everything you need. <laughs> <laughs> so again, to our listeners, guys, that's Jeff McMahon of TotalBodyConstruction.com. Thanks for listening in. This is what we're all about. We're here to keep fueling your health, your business, your lifestyle. So as always, keep living the fired up epic life. We'll talk to you guys again soon. And you're clear of the pod. Nice. So I love your little closing slogan there because it made me think of obviously my statement, which was originally inspired by Ernest Hemingway, which was live life to the fullest was Ernest, one of Ernest Hemingway's okay. quotes. And I use that to fuel and create my slogan, which live the fuel is technically an acronym. It stands for live the fired up epic life. Cause I'm the adrenaline junkie and Epic gets thrown around all the time okay. and fired up came from the firefighting, that life changing experience in my career okay. history. So just to help give you a little more background nice. on that. Yeah. I like that. No, so. we really uh, connected. Dude. It's weird. How It's a little weird. I was like, Oh my God, there's way too much common in here. I have like an Ohio like brother from another mother. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, connection wise, if there's anything and you know, anyone that I could hook you up with, are you, looking for anything, just let me know. Well, um, now you know what the show's all about. So that's how I look at it. I'm like, you know what, guys? I love, I mean, as I already hinted, my whole goal nowadays is every time I bring a new coast, I want to think of at least now, because I'm, I'm now over 100 episodes. I, this show's not even a year old yet. Okay. <laughs> so I've already launched 100 episodes as of Friday. So nice. it's, it's been two weeks, man. So now I've built up a nice base, and there's momentum has now been building. Mm -hmm. And so now I've got that network that I've built. So every time I bring on new co-hosts, I'm always thinking like, what can I do to help them? Because it's not about me. It's about my audience, but it's also about you, the co-host, because I truly believe in that whole mindset in the universe. It's like, okay, what do we do to give back to them? To thank you and appreciate you for coming on the show. If I can get you someone like Vinny. Vinny would be awesome. Dude, yeah. Vinny's got that. a six. He's been around for five years in the podcast world. So he's old school, like Johnny Dumas. And like I said, his, he's, he's, he's doing a million downloads a month. Easy. So. Okay. He's very he's successful. Like Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas level. But yeah, but it's in the fitness world. In the fitness world. Yeah. Like, I mean, his fitness confidential book, very inspirational. He talks about his struggle through cancer, rebuilding his life as a professional personal trainer and everything else. But he also sheds the light on what's going on in the personal trainer world and the fly by night weekend warriors who get their certifications and all that. And I get it. You know, I've, I've been there. <laughs> no, I, oh, trust me. I train many, many trainers and, um, yeah, it's not, a lot of them just pump out, take this supplement, take creatine, take this, take, yep. that, take this. I only use a company called NutraFit out of Tennessee. Okay. They've got the what I've seen in this world, the most cleanest whey protein that I found. They get it from Ireland. It's hormone free, everything. Yep. Free. Um, I get mine from New Zealand. Some of the um, Mets use them, like David Wright and a couple other um, athletes like that. But, um, oh. the, um, but the big thing was it tastes good. There's no xanthan gum. There's no any artificial stuff. It's all real. And there's only eight ingredients. And I know what all eight are. And he's explained nice. why they're all in there. Yeah. Like I know the guy, the owner personally. So. Well, I, I'm like you, man. Like I, when I was younger, I didn't know any better. Like when I went up firefighting, I was doing the whole go to GNC or a vitamin shop. Oh, like, yeah. And they're all like, I'll never step foot in any of those places Just anymore. Like buy whatever I could afford versus right. these are 45 bucks for a two pounder. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, I, get, I get a container like this for my pure my pure protein. I get that for fifty bucks uh, from mine, and it's all grass fed whey. Uh, I use Isogenics. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of people aren't are, have never heard of that company, but. They're a huge I've company. I've heard now. of them. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people don't see, I found them because of the firefighting. I accidentally, I went to a personal trainer event in Boston after my first year of firefighting and after backpacking in Ireland, <laughs> all right. uh, coming back and I was doing CEU credits for my spinning certs and stuff like that. And I was, and it's funny to talk about doing a cleanse. I was, I was shut down from six intense months of, of 16 hour shifts on the fire line in the mountains hiking, you know, 16 hours a day in the mountains fighting wildfire. So all the smoke and, and just, I was toxic. I had no oh, idea sure. what adrenaline fatigue was and all that crap, you know, adrenal fatigue. So anyway, I went there and took a class on toxicology of the body. And I was like, oh, oh, I finally have a clue. Like, what is this all about? Anyway, the one instructor happened to be using isogenics. And that's how I found out about using, I use their nutritional cleansing program to do the cellular level detoxification of what okay. you're talking about. Yeah. And I've been hooked on their stuff ever since, since 2010. Um, now obviously I've grown beyond just being a happy product user because yeah, they use the network marketing business model. So if you're, yeah, they you don't do. have to use that. I have 80% of my team are just product users, happy people just staying healthy. Right. But I have this, you know, I have a business team that I've been building as well. So it's all about building something you learn from Johnny Dumas and everybody else, right? It's about having a platform and building those, uh, streams of income, diversification of your Correct. streams of income. So you, you're it's just like, Hey, if I lose a client, right? You have plenty more clients to pick from. Same thing. What if I lose that one income stream? Like it's good to have that. It's always been there as like a fallback income stream and it goes up yeah. and down over the years. Cause I, sometimes I'm focusing on the business and sometimes I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Like hey, let's be real. We're busy building. I'm building a podcast show. I'm become, I've gotten more into public speaking. I've got two more speaking events coming up in the next two months. So this has been my biggest speaking event a uh, year ever. Like, we're always, okay. we're, we're both hustlers. <laughs> Fantastic, dude. Way to get it. Yeah, man. Like, so and I, I love what you're doing because I'd always thought about doing something like this, but it's just, it didn't fully click. And I, uh, I want to well, see you people access like to my course and you can see how I set all, you know, teach it like how I use PT in the net for my emails, which has a video, a picture of the exercise and a description. So people oh. know how to do the exercise without calling me, Hey, what's a one arm dumbbell swing or whatever the exercise is. Oh yeah. Like you're teaching somebody, Hey, you know, I want, I want to, I want you to do uh, one arm alternating uh, dumbbell snatches or kettlebell snatches, right? yeah. dumbbell or kettlebell snatch. Great. Here's your two pieces of equipment. Pick which one do you have? I will show you both. And right. people don't understand proper extension spinal alignment, setting your shoulders, all of that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we could geek out on that. So yeah, but I so I have that, you know, the equipment I use, you know, the top 20 ways to market yourself, um, nice. goes into, you know, how to set up your calendar, how to do your first assessment with somebody, things like that. You know, I'll give you the, um, yeah, you know what? Cause I'm, I'm not going to build anything like you're building, but I'm looking at building, uh, after going to thrive last year, another big thing everybody's been teaching is building a, your own educational system or your platform, right? A, um, mm -hmm. you know, they can build subscribers and followers too, and they can hire, and they basically build a course. And there's been a number of courses that I've had on my to-do list, just like writing a book about the change, you know, the life changing hotshot while I'm firefighting experience. Like I, that's on the do list. So like the course, uh, actually the course is on the list and the book is on the list. And those are like the big items on my dry erase board here. And I'm like, those are gonna take some work. Um, the book's gonna take some work for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, it's well now. Now they're coming out with a Hot Shots uh, nineteen movie this year, oh, which geez. I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm going to feedback on that one, but uh, you know. well, like I was in Rochester for the um nine eleven. I was a sophomore in college, and uh, I got the like, Rochester all the time of business. The movie came out for nine eleven. I don't know Nicholas Cage, whatever. I couldn't see it. It was just. Yeah. I well, I'll see. I didn't it. want to relive it all over. Yeah, it, it was, it's been years since then. Luckily, I I was only I was only a hot shot for 2010 and 2011. So, but I I fought fire alongside of the Grand Mountain hot shots who died, oh, yeah. and I knew 17 of the 19 faces. I we used to sit. I, I remember seeing their faces like at the next picnic table over underneath the tent at the fire camp. You know, we're all ch at Chow Hall time. You know, right? It was very militaristic. Um, and well, police is the same. That's all militaristic. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's one thing that you, you know, being married to her is that, uh, that was a life changing experience going from the corporate world, a farm kid, corporate world. Oh, what is it like to be a first responder type of thing? Like the, mm -hmm. I never understood this, this weird brotherhood, sisterhood bond, you know, that the police have and fire have. And 
when they're not arguing with each other, they actually all have with each other. <laughs> yeah. And until you've served, it's, it was like, oh, wow, this is, and it's not about like, oh, we're cooler than you. It is, no, you're here to serve. You got to swallow your own crap and yeah. realize that it's not about you. It's about every other man and woman on your crew that you're looking to get out alive. And it was like, oh, this is a good life training experience. Like, and our, our hotshot creed, our motto was duty, respect, integrity. Okay. So three powerful words I have chosen to never forget the rest of my life. Thanks to that experience. It's been very cool. And I try, I'm trying to infuse that into the business in a, in a certain way as well. So, and maybe in my future educational courses, I would like to see how you right. built that out. That'd be kind of cool. Well, and then, and, but, but the other part is if you know a lot of fitness people like through isogenics and all those other things. That oh, I know a lot. Do yeah. It. Like I know every CrossFit gym owner in the Lehigh Valley, for example, like I'm always well, like, trying to teach them like guys, like you can grow beyond the box. You can grow beyond the physical space. Oh. That's one thing that I teach about isogenics. I'm like, guys, like grow your business beyond the four physical walls of your space. I could have people, I have people on my SGX team from other states, Canada, Mexico. I'm like, I don't need to live by you to, to work with you. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> so, I like it better than the beach body. I think beach body is a little. My, my fiance hated their shakes and, and, uh, uh they, a, a good buddy of mine, I, I had him on the show. We actually sat down at a Starbucks cause he's a CrossFitter. I'm a CrossFitter. I'm like, Hey, you're a beach body dude. And I'm an isogenics guy. How cool would it be to sit down and do a and podcast together? So I was like, let's show that people can be friends <laughs> and actually have an intelligent conference. Cause he's also an ER doctor. So he's, he's an intelligent man. And he's also this jacked dude. They call him doc beast. Big okay. black, big black guy, man. Just ER doctor for three different hospitals. Um, so he loves his beach body cause he loves the platform. But my, my fiance and I, I can't stand the, the flavors and the way stuff tastes. And I'm not sure the ingredient sourcing is eh. So like I said, there's so many nutritional paths that people can take. I think the most important thing is that we help you realize, like, just read the freaking label. Um, I did it at the end of the triathlon today, just to close this out, is that there was a company there giving out samples of, it's called Honest Tea. Never heard of it. Weird brand name. I'm like, okay, it's a fruit, fruity looking tea drink in a plastic bottle that uh, has electrolytes. So all you see on their banner is electrolytes, Honest Tea. And I was like, yeah. I'm standing right by the booth and sure enough, uh, my friend gets her medal. Like, oh, hey, we're closing down. You guys want one? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll read it. <laughs> Spun that bottle over, 24 grams of sugar. Of course. Why not? And a 12 ounce bottle. Why I was not? like, no. What? <laughs> and, my, and, my, and my fiance took one and she looks at me and I, I'm taking a photo of the label and she's like, oh, here we go. And I'm like, baby, I'm not, you do what you got to do. If you're going to drink that crap, you drink it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Right. I'm taking this because I'm in Vinny's NSNG community and I'm going to post a photo of this. I'm like, this is the problem. You got world people who want to be world-class athletes like triathletes and they, people aren't, I saw countless people drinking that stuff. Nobody read the label. Oh. They saw electrolytes. That's all they saw. So. Gatorade, electrolytes. Oh, and it said, uh, it said organic lemons. So lemons were organic. And at the bottom of the label said, natural flavorings. <laughs> I'm like, and you see this paragraph of ingredients. And I'm like, read the label. <laughs> yeah. Just read the damn thing. Yeah. But no, like, check just, out my course if you like it. Um, yeah. Like you can be an affiliate, you know, set you up and get, yeah. tell people about it. We'll, I we'll, definitely want to dig into that because like I now have got the podcast platform. Like I do more affiliated. Like actually – even though I'm a nice genetics guy, Vinny created the purest vitamins that I've ever seen. He just launched it this past year. Like he set a goal to create a pure vitamin for himself because he's cancer survivor and everything else. And now he's like, screw it, I'll do it myself. So he created a company called Pure Vitamin Club. And okay. they launched a, the purest magnesium supplement that I've ever seen. Like I bought that originally for my fiance because she sleeps like crap. And then I was like, wait a minute, we're all magnesium deficient. So I started taking it and then she doesn't like taking pills. So now I'm hooked on it <laughs> and they just released a sublingual under the tongue. First of its kind B12. So for vegans and, ve vegans and vegetarians can't get B12 nope. unless you eat meat. So that was a groundbreaking thing. So he's got, he's got his own multi cap and the magnesium they launched last year and they just launched her B12 this year. It's the smallest little thing because they're not using binding agents like a lot of, uh, vitamin companies do like right you'll, you'll geek out like you should check them out too but i'll i'll let you connect with Vinny and learn more about that but i say you know what even though i'm an isogenics guy i'm like you know what i see a good product that's the only other 
uh, nutritional product that I'm even mentioning, I actually have them listed on my resources page on my website because they're doing something right. And maybe not everybody's ready for my level of the estrogenics world. I'm like, fine, then here, at least take his vitamins. And they're priced, and they're priced real. Like, it's not expensive. Yeah. I spend like 50 bucks like every three months to get oh, that's not bad magnesium. His, I'm, I'm taking them. The magnesium, multi-cap, and the, and the B12. It's like 55 I think I pay like 55, 60 bucks or something like that. I'm like, uh, I was like, how are you running a business? He's like, cause I'm not, he's like, I wanted to create a pure product that didn't, that could apply to the average and the regular man or woman. And he's like, not everybody has the money for elite top quality stuff. Right. So he wanted to prove that he could create a pure vitamin, um, <laughs> that was legit. I was, you gotta check him out. I'll, I'll, uh, when you send me the email, because I'll be going, I got to take my fiance to her family for dinner. Uh, yep. As soon as I get your email, I'll do my normal thing. I do a forward, I do a little intro about each of each other. And then I'll, I'll try and remember to put the links in for his stuff so you can research him. Okay. Um, but Vinny's pretty cool, man. If, uh, if, when you send your emails, put your credentials back in because okay. that will make it easier for me to do the intro. And then when he sees your level of education, he will definitely want to work you into his program and get you on. And usually every person that I've recommended him in the past three months, he's brought on. So Awesome. Well, yeah. I super, super appreciate it. I definitely think you and I need to stay in contact more. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's definitely connect after this. Yeah. And I, I want to hear more about your, uh, you're doing again, his detox thing. So yes. um, I'm excited. definitely excited to see what this does. So yeah. all right, brother, I will definitely uh, keep you posted and we'll be talking soon. All right, sir. All right. Later. Have a great evening. You too. Bye.